Good morning and welcome to King's Church. It's great that you can join us this morning. And I'm just going to open in prayer. Father God, thank you that we can meet together today. Lord, I pray that you would come and help us to worship, be with us as we listen for your voice and help us to hear and see what you're doing in these times. Amen. If you've 
been out and about in these last few weeks, you can't fail to have noticed all the rainbow that, rainbows that have appeared in windows, on pavements, lots of expressions, lots of creative expressions of rainbows that have been drawn in support of the NHS. I just want to pick up on the idea of rainbows today as we start to come out of lockdown somewhat. The rainbow is something that excites us and takes us by surprise, isn't it? We see one in the sky and everybody stops and says, oh look, a rainbow. And we turn our eyes upwards, it gets our interest, doesn't it? And although it's been a symbol for different groups, going right back to ancient cultures and right through to modern times, I'm more interested in what God wants it to point to. It's been a symbol associated with lockdown. And if it's a sign for these days, let's look at what it's meant to be telling us or pointing us to. Things in the natural often point to things in the spiritual realm that we need to take notice of. I wonder if you can remember when it was first mentioned in the Bible. Well, let's go back to the story of Noah in the book of Genesis and hear what the Bible story tells us. So as a response to seeing the world turning away from him and going their own destructive way, our own destructive way, God sends a flood. He tells a man called Noah to build an ark and fill it with animals and birds. And then it rains for a long period, doesn't it? And the ark and its contents are kept safe. After a long period of time, it stops raining and the flood subsides. The ark finds itself on dry ground. So what we're seeing in effect is the first family to come out of a lockdown type situation, having been confined for some time. Let's read a bit from Genesis. God spoke to Noah, leave the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives, and take all the animals with you, the whole menagerie of birds and mammals and crawling creatures, all that brimming prodigality of life, so they can reproduce and flourish on the earth. Noah disembarked with his sons and wife and his sons' wives. Then all the animals, crawling creatures, birds, every creature on the face of the earth left the ship family by family. It then says Noah built an altar to God and made an offering to him. It says God smelled the sweet fragrance and thought to himself, I will never again curse the ground because of people. I know they have this bent towards evil from an early age, but I'll never again kill off everything living as I've just done. God blessed Noah and his sons. He said, prosper, reproduce, fill the earth. You're responsible for the animals. And said, you're here to bear fruit, reproduce, lavish life on the earth, live bountifully. Then God spoke to Noah and his sons. I'm setting up my covenant with you, including your children who will come after you, along with everything alive around you, birds, farm animals, wild animals that came out of the ship with you. I'm setting up my covenant with you that never again will everything living be destroyed by floodwaters. No, never again will a flood destroy the earth. This is the sign of the covenant I'm making between me and you and everything living around you and everyone living after you. I'm putting my rainbow in the clouds, a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. From now on, when I form a cloud over the earth and the rainbow appears in the cloud, I'll remember my covenant between me and you and every living thing. Seeing a rainbow somehow orientates my mind towards heavenly things. What does it make me think of? Well, it makes me think of sunshine and rain coming together. And I, I don't know about you, but I've been really enjoying the sun, sunshine these last few weeks. And that has been great, but it's also been a time when we were really aware of the sadness in the nation 
of the loss, of the grief. And um, somehow we have to hold both things in tension in life. We weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. And one thing to rejoice about at the moment is many people are turning to God at this time. Some people would see a rainbow as a symbol of peace or breakthrough. You get it after a rainstorm, don't you, often, and it symbolises a breakthrough or the end of a hard or difficult time into a new, fresh, sunny time. And rainbows are often talked about as symbols of hope as well. There's something deep in all of us that longs, longs for all that the rainbow means. We're drawn to what the rainbow represents. It stirs hope up in us. We have a hope in Jesus that is steadfast and certain. Let hope arise in you today. Let it consume any anxiety and fear and doubt and uncertainty you have. In Romans it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Rainbows can point to hope, but so can we. We can be signs pointing others to Jesus as they see the hope and confidence we have and the peace. In the story of Noah, the rainbow is a sign of God's covenant too, his promise to us, his unbreakable promise that he will never again destroy all life. In Jesus, we see the complete fulfillment of this promise. Jesus is the one who has come to give us life. John 13, 16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And in John's Gospel in chapter 10, we're promised life in all its fullness, life to the full. And he promises to be with us always. I'll never let you down, never walk off and never leave you, it says in Hebrews. As we come out of lockdown and imagine the rainbow over us as we step into a different sort of landscape, the fact that God is with us and for us is being sung over our airways. In the words of the song, which is called The Blessing, it says, he is for you. He is for you. Let that sink in. He's made a covenant with us. He's a God of promise. He keeps his promises and his relationship with us. I will never leave you or forsake you. Noah is the first person I can think of that is somebody who's come out of lockdown. 
Lockdown is a place where you are confined and limited in opportunity and restricted in activity. There were other times when God brought individuals and peoples into a new place as well. You've got Moses leading God's people out of captivity in Egypt and then there's God's people led by Joshua coming out of the wilderness into the promised land. And as we've just been thinking about in the last week or so, the followers of Jesus after his ascension, they waited and waited, didn't they? And then they received the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And then they came out into the world. So it's there in the Bible, God bringing people into a new place. I believe God's bringing us, his church, into a new place at the moment. Like Noah, stepping out into a much changed landscape, we find ourselves in a new normal. We have to adapt and change, change our mindsets, routines, expectations of life, and of church as well. How we connect, what our work is, how we earn a living. Many are having to change the way they do things. I've been discussing this with some friends and it's good to consider where, where God is moving, what he's doing, and how we can join in with what we see him doing in the world at this time. So I'm um, here with two of my friends. There's Steph and there's Carolyn, and we tend to meet most week. I thought that it'd be great to have a conversation to see what we think God's doing in these times. Yeah, um, just first of all, what do you think God's doing in lockdown? What's he been doing? What's he been saying? I've got the words, um, looking out and powering up. I, lockdown has been, for, for us, I think, in um, our context, in Western culture, being locked into a time where um, church culture has ceased to be about Sunday morning gatherings or not ceased but the main function of church culture has been taken away from the Sunday morning gathering and church is I think being redefined and reconstructed in that we've realized how important our relationships with one another are the the ritual uh, and the importance of gathering is still there and um, for us, we've had the advantage of having technology. So even though if we're not in the same physical space, we're meeting together. And in some ways, it's had a different important. It's interesting, isn't it? That Sunday mornings have become, for some of us, more important, but also um, less of a focus in terms of the amount of time and energy um, getting there and things like that the focus of meeting together has been to be in relationship rather than just in ritual and um, I think also God has given us a little bit of a particularly if you're in an established pattern of Christian tradition and behavior even if you're in like we, I, I go to the Baptist church we have just as many traditions as the Anglican church or the Catholic ch traditions it's just that they are look they look slightly differently um but maybe god is shaking us out of some of the traditions which which are less important for for going forwards in terms of we're in a society that is mainly unchurched that doesn't really see or recognize the importance of god and and in this lockdown time i think he's reorientating church towards looking at what church is really all about, which is kind of is looking, the looking out thing, but also looking up to him in terms of reorientating us to, actually it's all about God at the, at the end of the day. And it's all about uh, being disciples of love and making disciples of love, of God's love. So I think we've been pared down to the essence of what church is collectively. And I think as individuals, we've been pared down. And so, and some of that, and I think we're seeing some of the causes of that, some of that right now, I think he's also exposing what actually is within the church, mm -hmm. uh, what we depend on and within our societies. Uh, I think you only have to look at what's going on in the, in the US at the moment to, to see that actually um, the underbelly of humanity <laughs> in all our uh, unpleasantnesses is being exposed as well 
and I think that's something for the church to is a, is something for the church to take note of. Mm -hmm. yes. I think I, I'd like to pick up on that because I think one of the things that God is doing is it's not just about what He's doing in the church; it's what He's doing also outside the church. And one of the things that I think it's at this time has really highlighted is inequalities in society and and things like low pay um, and uh, key workers um, on minimal wage, older generation, younger generation issues about domestic violence, about people not knowing their neighbours, the world. Um, having this breathing time from pollution. It just shows all the injustices and wrong, sinful ways of man in lots of different forms. And the spotlight is being shown on those. So I think that's one thing that's happening. I think also there's um, a lot going on outside our doors in people that are not yet Christians that we haven't really grasped as a church. I think we don't really know what kind of things people are asking at the moment. We went into lockdown with a society where the church really wasn't counted. And now we've got a world where people are asking questions, where people are turning mm. to prayer, where people are searching about Jesus, where people are going online to to see services where people are interested in things that mm. they weren't before lockdown. So mm. the world out there has changed in terms of the spiritual dimension of it. And there's much more in the media, much more in the media about faith, about services, about uh, organizations of faith and what they're doing. The, the perspective in that way has changed. Mm. And I think for the church, it, there is this real need for the church to have found out where their hope is and where their foundation is and whether whether as individual christians we're going to put our hope and foundation in jesus and in god or whether we're going to continue to go on our own sweet way of doing things in our own strength mm -hmm. or whether we're actually going to go right god it's about you and are we going to take these opportunities because mm -hmm. i think there's been a lot of molding and, and making of us as Christians and for some of us we will have gone with that and for some we will have maybe just tried to cling on to all that we hold dear in this time to keep us going and, and maybe really struggled as well. I think on the flip side again to, to come on the back of what Carolyn said on the flip side of that both in church and society we have practically demonstrated that we have abilities to change and develop um, and God has almost held up a mirror to ourselves in a positive way that we can if we want to if we want to we can change and change quite profoundly in on our lifestyles in in our in the way that we do things both in terms of our church traditions, in terms of the things that Carolyn was saying we hold dear, we can change. The way that we gather has changed. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that society has um, done things and not done things demonstrates how we can um, better steward our planet. You know, there are all sorts of things that have demonstrated that we don't need to consume as much. That we've, we've had a very interesting magnifying glass on God's creation, I think, in this time of lockdown and as we come out of it I think we can try and restore the normal that was before and I don't think I think there's been enough of an impact in national um, society and in, in, in church society and there will be an ongoing consequence of covid that we cannot do the things of before or cannot go back to some of the things just can't or we won't be doing for a long time so we need to reframe and you know a new normal it's my phrase at the moment is that god is i think giving us an opportunity to embrace his normal in a more profound and powerful way but we have the ability to do we we have the um capacity to engage with what God is doing or not. Mm. The choice is ours. If I can put a sort of um, every day on something that Steph said, mm. she was talking about um, the way that God has, we, we've embraced change and, and change has happened <laughs> if we wanted it or not. And I'll give you an example of, I meet with a, a load of older saints to pray on a, a one particular morning in the week. 
and one of them commented very recently about how they had all embraced technology and how they were using technology. Now, if you'd asked this group of people uh, three months ago about technology, they would have gone, Bleh! and yet they were all coping with the Zoom meeting going down and being able to get back on again without technical support from anyone because they were now used to how to use Zoom. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lie that we can't cope with change. And I think, um, you know, if you look in your own lives at what you have managed to do during this time that maybe you didn't think you'd be able to either cope with or do, we can embrace change. We can go with change. We might not like change. It's not comfortable. But there is a truth that with God, we can go forward with change. And yeah. we're going to have to because nothing is secure in our world at the moment. Everything is secure in God, but nothing yeah. is secure in our world. And we just don't know what's coming next. We no. can start planning for churches to get back to something where we can meet together, but we don't know whether that's actually going to be possible. Where it's going to go and how our new normal is going to be, nobody knows apart from God. Mm. And his foundation is secure. And as we do move forward, I think one thing we do know is we need to be ready because God tells us always to be ready. And I think more than any time in my life, we need to be ready for the questions people are going to ask us, ready to give hope, ready to give a future, ready to not be in despair, ready to say there is more, ready to say there is a future. And I think one of the positives of this time for many has been getting to know the people around them and realising that actually relationship is really, really important. And as church, we need to be ready to build into relationship yes. and to bring the, the good news that there is hope, that there is a God who loves people, that there is a future, that there is Jesus. We can't be lights hidden anymore. We've got to be ready. We've got mm. to be ready. And I think that's the challenge that God gives yeah. us at the moment. I wonder what the most important thing is that we need to get hold of as we emerge out of lockdown. What's the How one? big our God is. I, I think that is I the thing that we all God. need to, as, as corporately and as individuals, is to, that whole phrase in the Old Testament, which is one that we do not really talk about, is the fear of the Lord. And of course, fear is a particular, has a particular meaning in our culture. Mm. Uh, and, we've, and we've experienced a lot of that. Let's not denigrate you know the, the traumas that are also going alongside in our society which goes back to what Carolyn is saying is that as people of hope uh, we have something to speak into that in our own individual lives and corporately as church in our nation but there's that whole thing of of us as as individuals and corporately understanding how mighty God is you know you only have to go back into some of the Psalms and um, reposition yourself and I think you do that from a place of prayer I, I mean and let's not over spiritualize it it's talking with God it's making space for God mm -hmm. and even if that and the Psalms again do that really well even if it is in a place of lament or a place of grief or a place of fear mm -hmm. and anxiety to meet mm -hmm. with God in the midst of uh, that's what Christ has done for us isn't it it's me it's enabling us to uh, meet with the almighty in the midst of whatever life is for you at this particular time part of how we commune with God and understand the fear of God is through one another is in relationship and community and and doing that with honesty and how we can uh, support one another in that and a lot lot to get our heads around and um, Huge. a lot of change but um but we know we know God's um, God's in charge, and mm. just to keep looking at Him, I guess as well.
As it were, we're standing before that sea of glass, under the rainbow, surrounded by that brilliant light and the, the living creatures. We want to join our voices with that of the angels this morning. We want to cry out, holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. We worship you this morning in Jesus' name. We are full of awe as we stand before you with the elders looking up at the sea of glass and the rainbows around you. Jesus, you're full of power. You're the one that gives us breath. You give us, give us our very life. You fill us with your living water. Thank you, Jesus. Creation, I sing praise to the King of Kings. 